All right, the time has come. My framework laptop is finally here. I say finally, I think I ordered it about six weeks ago. I wanted to get one of the AMD versions of this laptop rather than the Intel ones. I can't believe I'm about to say this, but I don't think I've ever actually owned an AMD CPU before. So this is my very first AMD CPU ever. Uh, I think I owned a Radeon graphics card, like one of the 9800s that you could draw the little uh, little bit of pencil lead on back in the day to add a little bit more memory to it. But um, first bona fide AMD product, of course, that was in the days with ATI, way before AMD owned that portion of the computing space. So I'm gonna unbox the laptop. I went for the non-assembled version. So I've got an overhead camera just here, hello. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead today and just assemble this in real time on camera and talk about the framework and some of the cool things with it, whether it's a good laptop or not. I don't know, that remains to be seen, but um, let's go ahead and get building. Okay, so let's crack this thing open. I'm legitimately gonna be unboxing this in real time and I'm gonna go through all my tools back here and this is a, you know, just a bog standard Stanley knife. Cutting the seal on camera, huh? How about that? You are lucky. <laughs> Ooh. Ooh, okay, so what do we have in the box here? We have a little framework card. Ooh. This is nice. Okay, so a few bits of paperwork, which I'll legitimately never read, as well as some stickers. Reduce, reuse, repair. I like that, that's really cool. Bunch more stickers and this uh, really nice little computer patch guy. How cool is that? Okay. Next we've got the bezel. So, Oh yes, because this is an assemble it yourself uh, computer, obviously I have to put some work in. This is not just a, a normal unboxing. What we'd have, uh, in my Apple days, this is what we'd have called the top case. So it looks like this is just, you know, keyboard cover and trackpad cover, that kind of thing. Uh, a bunch of different adapters that I ordered. So I got, uh, well, let's have a look at this. I got the Ethernet expansion card. USB-A expansion card, a C, a C, and an HDMI. Now, of course, this laptop only has four ports, so I'm not gonna be able to use them all at once, but I wanted to, you know, build my perfect laptop, so that's what I went with. Now it's time, I guess, to actually get to the main event, the actual laptop itself, so. Ooh, it just, it just looks really nice. It comes out of the box like this. Ooh, yes, there we go. Okay, flip it over and have a look. Framework laptop DIY edition, AMD Ryzen 7040, Ryzen 5 7640U. So I mean, I'm, I'm not going for this laptop for its raw processing performance. I'm just purely interested in a, in a decent Linux laptop. So here we go. Ooh. There is the laptop itself. Nothing in it yet, I guess. So let's park this over here for just a moment. See what else is in the box, if anything. Aha, we do have, we do have a couple of other things in the box. I spy some, some RAM in here. <laughs> for a split second, I thought that this was a full length dim of memory because they've used a standard RAM box. So, so like a typical stick of RAM is like this big. So you see that that would fit inside this box, right? But they've just got a an SO dim laptop stick in there. I'll open this on the overhead camera, just in there like that with a little a little spacer. So you see the difference between a a normal piece of memory and <laughs> the the piece that comes from Framework. Okay, so that's 32 gigs of RAM. Now I, I'm gonna assume there's an SSD in here somewhere as well. So if we just dig through, aha, there's this little framework box here, which, what's this guy up to? 
I'm kind of think you got all these beautiful markings on this box. You kind of ex would expect them to have all of these little adapters in in this box, but okay. <laughs> Giant box for an SSD. One terabyte Western Digital Black. Again, I'm not going for massive performance on this laptop. I just wanted a really solid Linux laptop that could run a couple of VMs. Uh, and a cute little like framework screwdriver and spudger. Like all in one situation going on here with a, a removable, what is this, a T5? A little T5 and a Phillips Zero head screwdriver with a little flat blade in order to actually get, you know, like a pry bar or something like that, you know? Um, okay, so that's the bulk of the laptop unboxed at this point, which means it's time to actually get on to putting the thing together. So let's start by opening this up. This. This takes me back to my days at Apple. So for those of you that don't know, very long time ago, I used to work at the Apple store as a genius, which I suppose technically makes me a former genius. I wonder what I am these days. Um, I used to love working on the, the old MacBooks, you know, the old white plastic MacBooks. I, I used to do top cases like nobody's business. <laughs> but uh, this thing looks really nice. Oh, this, okay, so nice clear plastic, nice clear plastic cover there. Uh, what are we put in first? I, I guess the storage. Huh? So let's take the SSD and uh, let's just put this in in the storage slot. I'm going to assume, yeah, you can see this is a pentalobe right here. So let's go ahead and just get that out of there. Put the SSD into, into its... Uh, you can keep the battery connected. Yeah, interesting. One of the first things they used to make us do to MacBooks when it, whenever we did anything was disconnect the battery. And in, you know, the really early MacBooks was a piece of cake because the batteries were external and removable. But in these uh, in these newer laptops, they're also obviously inside, and we had to go through this whole bunch of like lipo battery training, which happens if you puncture a battery and all that kind of stuff. I guess it's okay if you buy a framework and don't go through that stuff, but Something to be aware of, for sure. Um, yeah, this is a really nicely packed machine. I, I love all the labeling that's in here, you know? Um, all the storage thing that's in there. Where, do, where does my memory go? I've got to install my RAM somewhere. I don't see a dim slot unless it's under here. Aha! Memory channel one and then channel zero. So I don't know if you're able to see in the overhead camera clearly enough, but there is a memory DDR channel zero printed on this right-hand slot under this sort of flap over here, and then DDR channel one over here. So I've only got one stick of memory, which makes me think I might do some research into whether the Ryzen chip prefers dual channel or not. I think it might, from what I remember reading on uh, the desktop Ryzen CPU stuff, like Jay's Two Cents and all that kind of stuff. So I've just got one stick of DDR5 memory here, 32 gigs on one stick. 64 gigs is gonna be total overkill for this laptop, but I'm just wondering whether I should have specified it with two 16s instead of 132, but hey, well, I guess you learn as you go in life, huh? So installing the RAM, super easy, just push it in the slot and then click it into place like so and put the flap down like that, I guess. Uh, input cover kit, I guess, might be next, or the bezel. Let's do the, hmm, let's do the input cover cover next. The input, the input cover kit. I love this orange on the packaging, by the way. Let's rip that open. Input cover kit, here we go. So this is the keyboard and trackpad, all, all as one assembly in here like this. Uh, I'm gonna assume that there are some screws to install. Is it, all, unless it all just clips in place, does it? Even my ThinkPads use some screws to attach the keyboard, so maybe I should read the manual, but you know. I am, I'm gonna do it, I'm gonna get the manual up. I suppose it's fair to say that documentation is a pretty big part of the experience, really. So uh, I, I need to remove the input cover. Maybe I should have read the instructions. 
Oh, look at that. One of these screws is out already. Are these captive? Are these captive screws in the bottom of this thing? Woohoo! That's a nice treat. Okay, so it looks like it's just uh, the captive the, the captive thumb screws are already in the bottom of the of the case. So it looks like it's just a case of, a, of attaching the, the top case and connecting in the ribbon cable of the, the trackpad. So I can't see that being too difficult. So let's try and just do that without spending too long reading the documentation. Uh, there's a little connector that goes in here. Okay, yeah, easy peasy. And then I guess the top case just slides on like that. Yeah, okay. They call it input cover kit. I call it a top case. Some Apple habits, they die hard, you know. Uh, bezel, let's, let's put the bezel on before I uh, go slamming these exposed components shut again. Now I, I opted for the, the most boring color bezel, which just attaches with magnets. Are you serious? It just sort of just clipped into place already. Like I was expecting to have to do the whole dance like I used to have to do with the old MacBooks of being like, ar, 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 ar. it was a real pain in the bum on those old MacBooks, I tell you. Oh, that's super nice. I've just already done the bezel in that time. I didn't expect that to possibly be so easy. <laughs> Fantastic. Okay. And then I assume, yep, yeah, these are the pentalobe screws in the bottom. So let's just go ahead and get those tightened up. There are five of them by the looks of it. Two in this front half of the laptop and then three along the rear. Okay, so let's figure out what my port configuration should be. I think I remember reading that the back USB ports are more performant than the front ones or something. So I think I'm just gonna put the first of these USB-C modules into the USB-C slot like this. Oh, that's nice. It has this little catch reliever lease. Good luck getting it out again once it's in there though. Jeez. Ooh, ow. <laughs> okay, well, I won't be getting them in and out too often, I suppose, but see, when I when I push this in into place, there's a little locking lever here, which just clicks into position. HDMI or ethernet? I think HDMI, no. I think USB-A next. Every good laptop should have a USB-A port on it, huh? For which side, though? You know, I'm going to just get my second USB-C port in there before I get too carried away. I love how the packaging is just all cardboard, you know? The whole ethos of this company is just mwah, chef's kiss. That's another USB-C one installed. Okay, so this is the left of the laptop. USB-A over there and then HDMI over there because then it's the same as my MacBook, I think so. So HDMI is gonna go over here. And then my muscle memory will just remember which side of the laptop different components are supposed to be on, eh? It's all about making things simpler for the old brainium. In goes HDMI, which means the last one, USB-A. over there like that. There we go. Well, first impressions are it's it's quite nice. It's quite light. The build quality is excellent. Let's go ahead and turn it on for the first time and see what happens. I don't know if it comes pre-installed with an operating system or even any charge in it or not. I'm going to assume that no signs of life means no charge. Either that or I was supposed to plug the battery in and I didn't look. I guess we'll find out in a second. Let's power this thing on. So I'm currently waiting, according to the instructions, I'm currently waiting for the AMD Ryzen platform to do what's called memory training. This is a new thing to me. I mean, computers in the old days, they just press the button, you turn them on. I haven't actually, the newest 
Intel or sort of x86 system that I have in the house is uh, an Intel 8th gen. So this is the first sort of Ryzen system, as I mentioned, that I've had. Um, so this is a new process to me, this memory training business. But uh, I assume it will turn on in, in good time. It does say the more memory you have, the longer it will take. Um, so I've got 32 gigs in here, as, as I said. So I guess we just wait. There we go. So it took a good couple of minutes. Uh, boot device failed, insert recovery media and hit any key. Okay, so let me go and grab a USB stick. Now, interestingly enough, just a few days before the framework actually arrived, they sent me an email talking about OSs and different kernel support and things like that if you're gonna be doing this on a Linux machine. Uh, so I've gone ahead and just gone with their recommendation of Fedora 39. I believe this is due to some kernel, uh, kernel level stuff that's been going on. So I'm just looking at this BIOS utility for a start. Wow, this looks really nice. Ooh, ooh, the keyboard feels nice. It's amazing how you can just tell from a couple of arrow keys, huh? Although, I do kind of wish that these two left and right arrows were the half height ones. Okay, um, here we go, boot manager. Let's select from Linpus Lite SanDisk, I guess that's what I want. Uh, start Fedora. My bezel isn't quite lined up correctly in this corner. I'm going to fix that whilst it's booting. Okay, so I think I'm set in terms of uh, booting into the Fedora installer now. Track paddle seems to work just fine. Install Fedora. Cool. I'm noticing the aspect ratio of this display. It looks like it looks like four by three. I, it hadn't occurred to me that that was a thing on this laptop but it looks fantastic. Uh, installation, I mean, I'm not gonna keep this installation <clears throat> on this computer for very long anyway. Probably gonna go with NixOS. <laughs> Maybe, we'll see. Maybe Ubuntu. It certainly won't be Fedora anyway. I just don't, I just don't particularly like the DNF ecosystem, the Yum ecosystem. It always feels a bit slow to me. And, you know, for, for a, a personal hacking laptop, something like SE Linux and stuff like that, typically just gets in the way a lot for me. So most of the time I end up just disabling SE Linux and disabling a bunch of other stuff. So maybe NixOS is what I need, a declarative configuration for my laptop as well as all my servers. Uh, yeah, I just, need, I just need something that can run a, a bunch of networking tools to do networking troubleshooting when I'm in the basement and stuff like that. And then also um, a system that I can run a Windows VM because some of the software I use to, you know, code things on my car, I have a Volkswagen Golf with what's called a VCDS cable, uh, and I plug that in through a USB-A port into a ThinkPad that I have right now, uh, the T480S, I think, from, from top of my mind. Um, I plug that in, and I have to run Windows on that laptop because it's just so awful. It's a dual core, the fans spin up all the time. I don't hear any fans on this, by the way, whilst it's installing. So we're off to a better start there already, I'll tell you. Um, so compared to the, the ThinkPad, it feels a lot thinner and a lot, lot lighter. I, I like the sort of metalish material feel. Um, I'm not entirely sure what the, the material is that's on the top here, but it feels sort of metally, sort of like a hybrid plastic metal feel. Yeah, I couldn't tell you just from feeling, which is probably a good sign. Um, but yeah, so in terms of my OS, I just want I want a Linux OS as the base, and then I want to run a Windows VM and then pass through that USB device for the, the cable to do coding for my car and stuff like that. Uh, and then eventually, I think, um, I'll use this in the workshop as like a 3D printing machine and stuff like that. So for like Bamboo Studio and another 3D printing software um, that doesn't run on Linux, I will probably just dual, well, I won't dual boot, I'll just use the Windows VM that runs on this machine. So Maybe the 64 gig of RAM wouldn't be such a terrible idea. Um, I will have to do some research onto the DDR5 dual channel situation versus single channel, like I said, I have in here. So just gonna let the installation finish up. I'll be back in a second once the laptop has rebooted. All right, there we are, folks. Fedora Linux installed on the brand new framework. The first impressions are, this is a very nice screen. It's uh, aspect ratio is one of the first things that's really striking me. It's very, very tall. 
compared to how wide it is, which for people doing development work and just generally living in the terminal like I do, this is going to be a fantastic machine, I can already tell you. I haven't heard the fans spin up hardly at all during the installation process. Getting it out the box and installed with all the various different accessories and things was super easy, maybe 15 minutes, if that. Uh, I've got to say, I mean, for, for the DIY edition, I was kind of hoping slash expecting a little more DIYing, but you know, this it seems like a really great package so far. I think time will be the jury here as to whether this actually is a, a long-term viable situation for a you know, primary Linux laptop for me. But first impressions, I've got to say, are excellent so far. Right, so that's the installation done. That is the, the build and the configuration, and I've got Linux on this in this machine. Okay, I need to do some firmware updates and that kind of stuff, and update Fedora with 1.2 gigs worth of updates, which is a particularly impressive number given that the entire operating system ISO was only two gigabytes to start with. So I'm thinking what else do I need to tell you? You know, it's a, a three by two aspect ratio with a, a 2256, strange number, by a 1504 top to bottom pixel ratio. Um, so that's what makes it the four by three aspect ratio, like, like an old TV. So it's almost a, it's almost a square-ish kind of situation. The CPU I have in it is the AMD Ryzen 7640U and uh, 32 gigs of DDR5 memory along with one terabyte of SSD NVMe storage. Uh, all of those things obviously are completely customizable in the framework configurator on their website. But, you know, in terms of like fit and finish and, you know, build quality and stuff like that, and just a laptop that is built to last me a long time, I feel like the screen wobble is a few percent disappointing. There is a little bit more screen wobble than I, than I kind of was hoping for as part of this. Uh, coming from a, a MacBook, of course, you know, th those things are basically the benchmark. Um, but I, d I don't feel like I'm really sacrificing a whole a whole lot here. I haven't tested out the speakers yet, so let's just get my first impressions of testing out the speakers. Okay, so they are definitely laptop speakers from a couple of generations ago. But, you know, if that's the only thing that I really have to sacrifice to get a really supremely long-lasting Linux laptop that I can upgrade for the next who knows how many generations of, of CPU. This is the holy grail. This is what we've been waiting for, for our laptop manufacturer to actually do. And I think Framework might just have done it. So thank you very much for watching. This was my initial unboxing impressions of the Framework 13. And until next time, I've been Alex from KTZ Systems.